All right, so we finally got some time to play in the shop on the carburetors, and uh, what I'm gonna do is make me a uh, air fuel mix adjustment screw, but it's got a thumb adjustment instead of having to use a screwdriver and burning your knuckles getting up in there trying to adjust the carburetor. This part right here is a taper, and also the very end of it is a taper as well because it controls how much air and how much fuel go together. So in order to figure out what are the most important pieces of this thing, I took a carburetor, and this is a good carburetor here. This was a set that was busted up. Looked like a aluminum eating beaver or something got a hold of it. Somebody messing around trying to adjust it. So what I did is I sectioned it off so I could see what's going on in the inside right here. This angle right here is not so important, but that little taper that's on the end of that pin is actually what's controlling the fuel. So what you might run into is if you're not the original owner of these things and you can't figure out why this carburetor is not adjusting on its air fuel, I can show you why real easy with this section right here that I was doing to remake this. And then you'll understand that sometimes it, maybe it's not your fault. Maybe it's something that got messed up in the carburetor previously and it's causing you problems. So let's zoom in here with the other camera and I'll show you some detail as to what happens when, like these carburetors, somebody knuckle drags on that air fuel mix needle and messes up the bottom of the seat because they didn't do a soft seat. All right, so let's zoom in here with the better camera and we can see the importance of doing a soft seat. You know, that's the golden rule. When you put your air fuel mix needle in, you want to put it down to a soft seat. But right here with this carburetor, once I sectioned it so I could see what the important areas are to make one of these with a knob on it, I realized that this one was so messed up. Now, it wasn't ever good anyway. I never have used these, but here's a good reason why a lot of people run into problems when you're trying to adjust these, and also why there's not one set point for how to adjust the turns out, like one and a half turns, two turns, because you don't know what the previous owner has done with your carburetors and have they messed them up. So right here, let me get a pair of tweezers, and you can see I got the light shining sideways on it but right there where it's shiny right inside of that little hole right there that's actually a burr that's worked up in the aluminum because somebody was knuckle dragging on that air fuel mix and they seated it so hard that they actually worked a burr up so i know from the other carburetor i've got the second carburetor back here right there so from this carburetor the little hole is right there. And so what I did is made me a little needle and I kept going further and further down until I got it to fit. But that hole is actually 35 thousandths, which is 0.9 millimeter. So if that bar wasn't there, my little tool that I made should slip all the way through. But as you can see, when I try to put it in, it bumps right into that burr. And so what that burr is doing, because of the pin itself on the needle, the end of the needle, is only 25 thousandths on the end, it's 30 thousandths up here. So you're talking about thousandths worth of gap to get some fuel to flow through there. So with that burr in the way, what it's doing is throwing off how much fuel can go through because it runs right into that burr. So it's basically that burr that went all the way around from where it was seated too hard has made that hole smaller and so now your air fuel mix is off, so you'll have to turn it further out to compensate for that little burr right there. So that's a big problem, and that's a lot of the reason why these carburetors end up not setting up for folks. You just can't get your air fuel mix right, can't get it to adjust right, all of that. So while we got it apart, it's kind of neat to see what's going on in there. Uh, normally you can't see it because it's all covered up in aluminum, but if you wanted to know, right there is the whole that the fuel flows up to go into the needle area. And so if we set the needle on, if you're wondering how important is this taper up here, this is a bigger taper, it's not very important. It just has to be clear enough to let the fuel get out. The important one is this little tip on the end. So it needs to be nice and straight and it doesn't need to be damaged at all. It needs to be real smooth. So we worry more about this little end right here than you do any other part. So let me set it in there and I can actually show you what it looks like when it's soft seated right here. So what I can do, I can see the shadow. So when it raises up, I can tell when I've hit the end of it. So let me just get my finger on it. Right there. 
Let me get the finger back of it. So right there is the soft seat. And so if you're looking up into the throat of the carburetor, you'll see that the tip sticks out a little ways out at soft seat. So now let me adjust it out a turn and a half and you can see where the needle comes. So there's a half, one, one and a half. And so at one and a half turns, if you look at the height of the needle, the needle is actually flush with the inside of the throat of the carburetor. So that's right where you start doing anything. Prior to that, you're not doing much at all. Just a little bit of change all the way in, there's no fuel. And then you can start working at one and a half. So that's why people say start at one and a half because that's where that needle starts coming out of the throat. So then if we go, say two turns, there's two turns and then two and a half is usually where I end up just over the years of dealing with these, you can see at two and a half, it's actually down below the surface. So now you've started to open up. Most likely I'm at two and a half because I probably got a burr over the years of somebody knuckle dragging on these carburetors and messing up these seats. So there you go. That's how that little guy works and how the fuel flows up inside of there. And you can see all it does is just mimic it. And there's a few thousandths in between the inside of the hole and the outside of the needle, and that's where you get your fuel. All right, so let's say you got one boogered up. Well, what are our options? Well, we do know, and just for measures, I measured it just to make sure that it is 0.9, and you can see that if these carbs hadn't been destroyed already, and then I destroyed them by cutting them open, I could take a 0.9 millimeter drill bit and come in here and knock that burr off, I would have to come in this direction. So come in from the back of it, go all the way up through there without the needle in it and try to, with my fingers, get that burr worked out. Then I could probably get the carb to set up a little bit better on its idle with its air fuel mix. But that's really the only option that we got other than just scrapping the carb because you can't get it to adjust or knowing that you have to adjust out two and a half turns, three turns or something to compensate for that little bit of burr. Well, all right. Well, I hope that helps somebody. Uh, understand a little bit more about why you can't just set a certain number of turns out on these carburetors unless you were the only owner and you've always taken care of your carburetors or it's the first time the needle's ever been adjusted then the seat wouldn't be damaged but if somebody's come in there and rammed it down real hard this is the result is that you get that little burr right there goes all the way around it blocks off this port and then you can't do your adjustments or when you do your adjustment it's not what you thought it was going to be. You just have to keep playing until you can get it adjusted. Alrighty. Well, hope that helps someone. And thanks for watching.